What's up my friends, welcome back! So it's been a while since my last Electro News episode, so here we are once again. I will show you the projects that I'm working on right now for the next maybe two or three months I have here on my table. We have another smartwatch, we have a filament extruder, we have the next on display, we have a PID touch bar, no, PID touch plate. What more do we have? We have some components, new components. So I will show you all that in this video. First, I will show what I have here on my table and then I'll go step by step with each project separately, explain it to you. So guys, I think this will be interesting, so let's get started. Okay, so let me show you what projects I have here on my table and then we'll go step by step with each one. So one project I'm working on is a new version of the smartwatch and for that I have two tests uh, for new components. First, I want to use another, a different kind of Bluetooth connection. In this case, I will use it using this one, but I will want to try these versions here. And then if that will be okay, I would like to try a new type of the screen. The problem with this one, as you can see, the module of the screen is quite big, but the screen itself is very small. So I found this one, this is an LCD, a color LCD, and also has a round shape, so the watch will be more elegant. And at the same time, I want to use another RTC module for the real-time clock. And also this module here, which is used to measure the heart rate and also the oxygen level in your blood. So I will place that on the PCB so we could measure that while you, wear, you, we are, you are wearing the watch. So that will be one project that I will make this, during these months. Okay, so another project will be the filament extruder. I finally have this part here. This was quite expensive, around 200 euros. I have the heaters, the nozzle for 1.75 millimeters, and that will be related with this project, which is already finished and you will have it, I think, next, next week. And this is a temperature controller for high voltage 220 volts because these heaters will work with 220 volts. So this all together, I will have to add the motors, the gears, and to measure the output of the filament, the speed, and so on. And with that, I'll make a filament extruder so I can recycle my 3D printed parts. So stay tuned for that. I think this will be quite interesting. I also want to show you this in this episode. This is a mini hot plate preheater. So this is basically a heater that is used to reflow SMB components. We add some solder paste, the components, and then you place the PCB on top of this, which will get very hot, and you reflow the components. And later, I never used this yet, and later we'll see a test with that with a PCB and some small components. So stay tuned for that as well. So next, remember the smart glass project. So this is evolving. I now have a PCB. I didn't have time to assemble this. But this PCB will have the microcontroller in the middle. Here it will have the Bluetooth module, as you can see. We have the Bluetooth module. And at the output, I will connect this small OLED display and show you the picture on a glass and then on a small plexiglass. So you can see it in front of your eyes. It will have, uh, it will have a battery charger connected to this. So yes, this project is evolving. I will have it maybe in a month or so. When I, ha I will have time to assemble the PCB and make some tests, make a 3D printed case and then assemble it uh, together. So stay tuned for that. Okay, another project will be an STM32 development board. So why I'm making this PCB? Because I want to make tests for a future project which will be another radio controller. But since I need more memory and more speed and more channels, I want to use the STM32. So this board, I want to make tests with the NREF24 radio module. It has an FTDA chip on the back, so we could program this with a USB connection. And now the USB will be a USB Type-C, as you can see here. So this is the first PCB that I designed that has a USB Type-C and the rest is, uh, well, just as you can see here on the STM STM32 board, the crystal clock, a button for the reset and some more connections. So once I know that this PCB works because this is the first PCB that I designed with the STM32, then I'll make the PCB for the radio controller, which will work a lot better because this microcontroller has a lot more power. So in a moment, we'll talk about that as well. So another project will be this. I'm not even sure how to call this. I think it will be something like a PID touch plate. So what I wanted to place a metal ball and touch and sense where the position and place it wherever I want using PID control, just as we did with the ping pong ball, but that was just 1D. Well, yes, 1D, this would be 2D. So basically I want to use these very small capacitive sensors. I have like 200 of them. As you can see here, we have a lot. This is very small and create my own table. And then we have some multiplexers because of, of course for 200 sensors, you have to mul multiplex that output and connect it maybe to an Arduino. And if this part doesn't work, I have this one here and this is a resistive screen. So uh, depending on the position where you touch, it will change the resistance. 
So like that we can detect the position and maybe control with some servos the position of the ball. This will be another uh, cool project in order to learn how to use PID. So stay tuned for that in a moment. We will talk more about this. By the way guys, since explaining each project separately will make this video very long, I'm not sure if I will fully explain each project and also you have some timestamps below in the timeline so you can jump directly to the project that you want. So use the timeline below. Okay, so let's continue. Now these here are some Nextian displays and if you remember in a past project I've used this one which is the smallest one. Now I have this one and also the biggest one that they have. This is 10 inches, this is a touchscreen, you can play videos here, you can play sounds, you can put buttons, sliders, anything that you want. And then you can connect that to an Arduino and communicate with that. So we have some cool projects that I think to make with this here. And also I'll make a tutorial on how to use it. Stay tuned for that, this is quite interesting. So here I have the components for a project that I think I mentioned on my Instagram page. So basically this would be a shock game, I've seen this project on the internet. So what you have is uh, four players and the last one or maybe the first one to press a button it will get a first uh, or a small shock uh, with high voltage. Don't worry I think this won't be dangerous because I'll make the, the high voltage uh, very short, a very short pulse and also this doesn't have that much power. I mean it has high voltage but it doesn't have much current so maybe it will make just a little spark on your finger. So yes, maybe this will be dangerous, but I'm not sure till I don't make some tests. It will be a cool project with a 3D printed case, with some rules for the games and so on. So yeah, basically these are all high voltage transformers. Stay tuned also for this project. So the last product I want to show you very fast is this power supply for breadboard, which I will use a lot because I make a lot of breadboard tests. And this is from the EIM technology. It has an internal battery, you can set the voltage, right now it's set to 5 volts, but you have here a screw. So you can set the voltage to up to 24 volts. You can charge it with the USB charger here. And it also has a USB output if you want to charge your phone or any other stuff that you want to connect with the USB output. And uh, this will plug directly into the breadboard. And then as you can see here it has some pins. And like that it will supply 5 volts and ground to the entire breadboard. It's quite useful and it's not that expensive. So guys, as you have seen, we have a lot of parts, a lot of projects. So since I don't want to make this video like 50 or 60 minutes long, I'll only talk about the smartwatch, maybe about the STM32 board and a little bit about the, the Nextian display, which you will have the video soon. And also I will show you some tests with the preheater so we can solder some SND components. And the rest of the projects, well, I already explained it a little bit and you will see more in the next uh, Electro News update. So let's just start with the smartwatch. So guys, let's talk about the next version of the smartwatch. First of all, let's uh, see what components are very big on the PCB because the main problem with this PCB is that I want to make it this, uh, as small as possible. So I want to remove all the big components. For example, the real-time clock, let me just focus here on the other camera. This is the real-time clock and this is the DS3231. And as you can see, it's quite big. It will occupy a big part of the PCB. So I found a different one, for example, this one here. This one is the DS1307, I think, and this is a lot smaller, as you can see, if you compare that with the other one. As you can see, this chip is a lot smaller than the DS3231, so I will use this one. That's why I bought this module here to make some tests, because I never used this one. So I'll make the, some tests with the Arduino, if, and if I know for sure that it works, well, I'll use that on my PCB. The next component that I want to change is the Bluetooth module. As you can see, the Bluetooth module will occupy a lot of space, like half of the one side of the PCB. That's why I bought some different Bluetooth modules. I'm, for now, I'm using the HC06, no, the HC05, and I also want to make some tests with the 06 because this one can also be placed in master mode. And if this doesn't work, well, I bought this one. This is the HI40, the GDY, GDY40. As you can see, it's a very small module. And I also have this one, and this was the DY9 or something like that. I'll put the links below if you want to see this. And this works works with wire communication as well. These are both Bluetooth modules. And uh, I also have the SMD version of the HC05. So I'll make some tests with this, and then I will select which one I will use for my project, which one will be the best suited for this PCB. And the final part that I want to change is, of course, the screen. As you can see, the PCB is not that big. Is not bigger than a normal watch but part of this PCB is the screen and as you can see it will make the watch very thick let me show in the other camera because the screen has also a PCB behind 
So I want to remove that PCB and also use a different screen because even if the PCB of the screen is quite big, the screen itself is very small. It's just a few pixels. So that's why I found this other module here. This is an LCD display. This is a colored LCD display. And as you can see, let me show you in the other, and other camera. This is round, so the watch will be a lot more elegant and it will have a more shape of a watch. So I've used this, it works with the Arduino, you can sh display pictures, but the problem is this also has a PCB behind. So I want to remove that and solder directly these pins here, as you can see, directly on my watch PCB in order to have only the screen. As you can see here, I have only the module of the screen. So all I have to do is to design the PCB with these pins here and then solder it onto my PCB and like that it will be flat so it won't occupy too much space basically that will be the update for this watch a new screen a new bluetooth module that will be smaller and can also be connected to smartphones talk it to each other send signals maybe to control a drone and stuff like that and also i will make uh, i will use another uh, real-time clock module uh, ic which is this one here which will be a lot smaller the problem with this one is that it also requires a crystal clock as you can see we have here a crystal clock so maybe this together with the crystal clock will be bigger than the ds3231 so i have to make a decision about that that's it i'll make the pcb for this and maybe in one month two months i'm not sure when i'll have it finished i'll make another video about this new smartwatch project oh guys and i almost forgot i also have this small module here that i want to place on the pcb and this is a heart rate monitor and also uh, oxygen level in the blood monitor. So I'll use this, I'll place it on the PCB so it can measure directly on your hand, the blood pressure, not the blood pressure, the, the heart rate, or uh, maybe I'll place it on top of the PCB so you can place your finger on top. I'll show you a close look of, the, of this module. It's quite small, the PCB is big, but I will use just the module and solder it, the SMD version on my PCB. Okay, so that's it, now we can continue with a different project. Okay, so next let's make some tests with the MHP30 mini hot plate preheater. As you can see, this is from Miniware. It's very small, it has a nice design, but let's see how it works. First, let's see what we have inside. So we have the actual heater, which I'm not sure if I can take it out, okay. We have the actual heater. So we have a cable, which by the way, this is a silicon cable, so it will be heat resistant. Of course the power supply and I just pour it on. So we have the same, actually the, is the same menu as on the TS80 soldering iron. I can see some LEDs here. I think I should take out this silicon cap. Oh yes, of course. And as you can see this is some sort of ceramic. Now it's very cold. So this is not hot yet. And I think the LED, since now it's green, I think it will get red um, when this will be heating up. And on the back we have two push buttons, so with this I think we can control the menu. So as you can see, if I press this button, it will start heating up. Let's see if that is true. 24 degrees, 25, yes. Right now it's heating up. So let's just leave this heating up and now I'll prepare this PCB. For now I will solder these SMD components for the regulator. This is the MS1117. I will solder a few 0402 capacitors and a big capacitor. Let's add some paste here. Oh, I can already smell it. Yes, it's hot. It's 120 degrees. Okay, so I finished adding the solder paste. Let me just make a zoom here. As you can see, I placed some solder paste and now I will add the components and then I'll place it here and reflow. Replace the component. So now I have, as you can see, all the components. So it's time to reflow. This is already quite hot. We are now at 220 degrees. I'll place this on top and let's see if it will do the job. Okay, so I place the PCB on top. Whoa, place the PCB on top. Now let's see the results. Okay, so I can see the paste that is melting uh, already. Let me just take a picture with my smartphone here because I'm using the cameras to record this. So as you can see, we can see some smoke. So the paste is already melting a little bit. That's the magic wool. One resistor is not aligned, one capacitor. Okay, so here we have pretty much the first results that I have, as you can see, are not the best because my solder paste is a little bit old. It doesn't have that much flux. And also I had to tap each component because they got moved. So let me just make another test and get better results because these ones 
well, I can't say that are that good. I mean, they are soldered in, pla in place, but this is kind of ugly. Okay, so here I'm placing a little bit of solar paste for these three capacitors. Now let's just add the capacitor. There's one, there's the second one, and there's another one. So now we can reflow it. Okay, so now I have it at 240 degrees and let's just place the PCB on top. And just wait. Let me zoom here a little bit. So there you can see the solar paste melting. I'm not sure if I should increase the temperature a little bit. Let's just increase it to 280. Yes, I've increased it a little bit and as you can see, the components got soldered in place. In place. And that's it. I think I can take it out without me burning. Don't want to get burned. Okay, so this time I think that we have some pretty decent results. As you can see, the curve of the solder paste is quite quite nice. The components are soldered in place, in place, and that's it. So just a few seconds and it got reflow. Of course, you, you have to tweak the temperatures because each solder paste will use a different profile for the temperatures. So you can control that with the buttons. Let me show you. Okay, so right now this is quite hot. I hope that I won't get burned. So as you can see, we have two push buttons here on the back. So if I long push this one, I can change the temperature. Let's see how we can go up to 350 degrees, which I think is very high. Let's leave it at 220. And with the other button, if you long push the uh, long press the other button, you can stop the process and you can get into settings. And here we have a bunch of settings. Anyway, so that's how you control it. Let me just cool this down and then I will take it out and show a little bit inside because this is a very well made, made design. It's very compact. Okay, so I think now that this is cold enough so I could open it. So as you can see, this can separate. We have this LED here that is an RGB LED, so it will be red when it's hot, green when it's standby, and white going to red when it's heating up. Let me just pour it off. So we have two push buttons here, an USB Type-C input, the OLED display, and that's it. And these are the connectors for the thermocouple and the high current uh, connectors for the heater inside this ceramic plate. And that's it. That's all you get with this device. Okay guys, so finally, let's talk about this huge display. This is a touchscreen display from Nextian. So you can create your own design, your own pages, and then communicate with the wired communication that we have here with an Arduino. The good thing about this uh, display is that it could also play videos and also sounds. It has a sound output and it's very, very easy to use. So let me just explain you what I will do with this uh, screen. Okay, so remember that in a few projects I've used this one. This is just three inches. I think this is four or five, and this is 10 inches, it's quite big. So I want the screen. Well, I want to make another escape room puzzle that will be based on a neutrino rig and Morty bomb. So it will be huge, maybe like this table. And in the middle we have the screen. And from here I want to control everything. That's why I want this. But you could also use this with a home automatization project. So you can have your rooms here with buttons to turn on LEDs, to maybe turn on your fan, open the door. And from here you can connect to an Arduino and that Arduino maybe will, will send Wi-Fi data or radio data and control stuff around your house. So why is this very easy to use? Well, because it, came, it comes with the Nextian uh, HMI software where you can create your platform. And in a future video, maybe next week or from two weeks from now, I'll show you some examples for controlling a slider and send data to the Arduino to control an LED or anything else that you want. I have another example how to read data from the Arduino from a potentiometer and control a gauge. For example, if you're making your own electric cart, you can read the speed and the RPMs with the Arduino. And then from the Arduino, you can send the data with the wired communication to the screen and display that with gauges and with numbers on the screen. Another example that I will show you is how to create your own pages. So you can change by clicking the screen, you can change to the next page and also how to create a custom made uh, button. So you can create your own button and pushing that you can make any process that you want. Send data to the Arduino, receive data, change the page, enable, enable something like for example, another example will be how to control video with this screen. So you can make your own video, place it here 
and also use the output here on the back. This is an audio output and play sounds by connecting a speaker. I will show you an example in just a moment. Hey guys, thanks for staying with me till the end of this video. I hope that you like it and the most important part for me, I hope that you learned something. And then I'll also show an example using the real-time clock. As you can see, this has a, a cell battery here for the real-time clock. So you can get the time uh, from this display, the hour, the minute, the date, the year and so on and display that using your font on the screen. So I will also show you an example with that and how to make it the full tutorial. So that's it about this screen. Stay tuned for the, for the project and also the tutorial on how to use it. And if you have any other idea of an example with the screen, comment below and maybe I'll make a second video and show you what more stuff you could do with this screen. Okay guys, so I think that's it for this Electro News episode. Otherwise, it will get quite long. Remember that below you have the link for this power supply the uh, small heater for uh, SMD reflow and all the products that you see here and also the links for the past project where I, I was using the Nextion display if you want to see that and how to use the Nextion display and stay tuned because the next week I think I will post the project about the PAD temperature control for the filament extruder and maybe in two weeks I will post the project with the Nextion display with this big Nextion display where I will show you all the examples and how to make those. So thank you very much. Once again, I hope that you learned something new in this video. Make sure that you subscribe if you're not subscribed and give me a like because if you give me a like, YouTube will recommend this video more and like that you will help my channel. And as always, thank you very much to all, all of you that are supporting me on Patreon. And if you want more of my t-shirts or my designs, you can find those in the links below. And that's it. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.